People, I don't want to make it come like I sound like I've got like all these people that are messing about time. You should do a video on this and a video on that. But I get a couple people once in a while who like to say, Here's a topic you might want to cover. And sometimes I'll think about it and say, Can I make it work? And if I don't think I can, I just leave it. I got one tonight that's a little bit rough. I'm going to try to make it work. So it's kind of like pounding a round peg in a square hole. So a friend of mine and I got into a conversation today about social media and mental health. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing of mental health again. I've already done a video on music and mental health. But the reality of it is, is that yes, it goes hand in hand. The same as if you're looking at your friends' feeds and they've always got the perfect pictures, the perfect life, the perfect vehicles, everything, you know. It's family photos in the park with the leaves on the ground, the kids there with the ball of leaves in his hands or her hands. Uh, you know, he's got a brand new pickup, she's got a car, Chubbs Jr.'s in, in hockey school and baseball camp and all this cool stuff and you're thinking, wow, I'm making the same money, we're making the same money in our household and we're struggling to keep clothes on the kids, the lights going and everything else. Not that, you know, we're desolate or anything, but we're working, you know, to survive. And um, it, it's depressing sometimes, it really, you know, because you're sitting home struggling to do these things and it just seems like it's so much easier for everybody else. But what you need to keep in mind is there's a reason that a lot of people have coined it fake book. And a lot of people aren't happy, you know? Uh, and it's the same thing for musicians, you know? Uh, we look at who's got the premium gigs and we wonder, my band does the same set list, we're as equally talented as these other bands that are getting premium gigs. And they're playing these places, they're doing these things, they're getting all the adulation, they're getting on, you know, TV shows, they're getting to big festivals. And you're trying to figure out why. And what you need to realize is music hasn't changed in the last 20 years. Well, even longer. I'm just using that. But it hasn't changed at all. And it revolves around luck in a lot of cases. You either know somebody, you're in the right place at the right time, or you're willing to play for a bit cheaper. Sorry. But anyway, those are the things that you need to keep in mind. And it's really hard to do, I know. And I, I wish I could say I was the person that looks at things and go, well, that doesn't bother me, because it does, because I have a YouTube channel. I look at my channel and I look at the 784 people that I've worked kind of hard. I could put more work into the guitar playing, I know I can, uh, but I don't have time because I'm trying to work so I can keep up, you know, with the people who own Chubbs Jr. But the reality of it is, is that um, I'm affected by it as well. I look at these things with the bands, I look at my band, might not have played a gig in a month and a half and my friends' bands are playing all over the place. And it's like, well, I wish I was playing. And then you start to miss it. Uh, COVID was really bad, but I felt like we were all in that sort of holding pattern together. Um, we all suffered. The other part is that, you you know, you're, you're looking at things like equipment. You know, I'm here playing an Epiphone uh, Les Paul Custom Pro. And I'm looking at a 22-year-old who works three hours a week at the grocery store. He's got a $6,000 Les Paul and a car, you know, and better clothes than I got. Now I realize he's probably not paying a mortgage, but he's only working a few hours a week. Like, I'm thinking, this is depressing. And if, and if you're struggling once again, that's going to make you struggle even more. Um, I, I can't even imagine what it's like for the guys writing their own music right now. Um, you're writing really good songs, you put a video of your band or your solo performance of a song and you get three likes and one of them is your mom because your dad was like, I'm not fucking making that. Anyway, it brings you down because when you're looking at somebody else whose band, punk, pop band, put up a song with one chord and they're in their 30s singing still about like uh, their dicks and, you know, 
peepees and you know vaginas and it's got like 10,000 likes so you're sitting down thinking to yourself why the fuck is that you know and it brings you down every time I lose a subscriber I have to put my mind in the mindset that and tell myself and I have to beat it in there I'm not for everybody I made a comment somebody doesn't like I did a video somebody didn't give a shit about so like I don't like this guy anymore he did one good video you know that I agreed with um, and I wish it was as easy to do that with everything but it's not it's social media it's become a very unrealistic yardstick that we use to measure success and happiness and everything it's a whole uh, bevy of basing your popularity and your worth on likes and comments and shares and that's enough to make anybody depressed in my opinion but that's just my opinion once again so there are ways around it you can try to take a break from social media um, for musicians who rely on it as a free platform to promote themselves it's a bit rough um, and that's another thing people are posting all this like people are complaining that they can't get on the radio they can't do this they can't do that they can't make money but then they're they're posting their shitty Spotify uh, numbers you're given Spotify free press for giving you no money to share your music think about that for a little bit um, that's got to bring people who don't give a shit about Spotify who are trying to make money or trying to get themselves heard depressed so you know it's one thing or the other I look at other channels and I look at you know guys posting videos and they're they're all like this is me playing my guitar and then they put a video up and like 10,000 likes you know I'd get like three so and, and then you wonder you, you keep wondering to yourself why is that once again my friends introverted uh, a lot of them don't subscribe to social media because they're sick of it we're all in our 50s and they're more mature than I am obviously they don't use words like pee pee and vagina and they've learned to not give a shit about social media a lot of my friends which is cool I wish I could be like it uh, now I don't go on Facebook and look at Chubbs Jr. and his family and think wow I wish I had that because I don't want to be a pretentious prick either uh, who takes pictures where everybody's wearing the same fucking sweater all the time like fuck that but we need to get out of that and measuring our worth from that yeah it's great if somebody's successful it's great there's probably other reasons for it other than them being better or worse or whatever um, so yeah we definitely as musicians use this as some sort of measuring apparatus because I want to say yardstick again to control what we feel about ourselves our self-worth and uh, as soon as we can realize that we've accomplished things before social media we played gigs before social media without social media and people heard us before social media <laughs> then we can take some of our own personal power back and sort of take some of your worth and distribute it within yourself regenerate it to the world and have a positive attitude so that's all I'm going to say about that um, another thing I'm going to bring up is I had a channel about to my attention called the art of guitar and a series this dude is doing called fix this band um, because the conversation I, I, I had about it with the same person today, because it was a comment on one of my last videos, uh, if this person was on my radar. And they kind of were. I didn't know what the name of the channel was. I've watched several of this guy's videos. He's real deal as a guitar player, educator, really talented, really talented guy. I don't think he means any malice, though, uh, towards anybody that he's uh, critiquing. Uh, so this is the answer to that question. I don't think he is calling people out. He's taken videos that are fairly old in a lot of cases and um, given advice. I don't think I would do that, but I also don't think of myself of his caliber musician. Okay? So I don't want to look at someone and go and say, you should do this, you should try this, you should try that. Uh, that's just me. I think there are, you know, other things, other ways like you could do it. Probably ask bands to send in video footage of their live performance and then get them to critique it. If they want you to do it on the channel publicly through uh, the platform of YouTube, then that by all means go ahead if they're, if they're cool with it. 
sometimes it's great to get constructive criticism, you know, and he's got a great channel, he's got the professional microphone, all, he's got all the shit I don't have. I'm, he's not sitting in front of a phone that's laid on like a microphone stand with an iPad holder, uh, with a cat who's obviously just thrown up out in the dining room, and a dog who's right there licking his bird. So he doesn't have to contend with that. So that's another thing about social media, I guess. Where you're making your videos, I don't know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I do appreciate them. Thank you so much for subscribing and sticking around. I do appreciate that. Thank you to the United States of America for being 60% of my viewers. Thank you to the other 28% in the United Kingdom. The 7% of the viewers in Canada. Come on, guys, I'm Canadian. Can't you do better? We're supposed to be, like, friendly and shit. But anyway, I'm uh, going to finish drinking my American beer and uh, thumb through Facebook and hate my life. Here's a little thing, though, that somebody once said to me. And uh, I'm going to do it in their voice and use my last name, okay? Party boy, you got to look at it this way, right? You got the crowd on Facebook that are all right happy. They got the missus and the fella and the youngster there. Buddy's working offshore on the oil rig. As soon as he's gone, sure, she's up the road banging young fella who works at Walmart for nine hours a week and sells weed. Is that happy? She might be. Anyway, guys, cheers.